What's up? So this is Julio Alejandro. This is about 30 of June 2014. I'm in the middle of nowhere, New Hampshire. It's about two hours or three hours from Boston. Um, I'm currently living in Chicago. I've been there for a year, for a year and a half. Um, I've been from the Pork Fest. It was one of the coolest festivals, the largest uh, libertarian festival in the world. They have 300 events where you can get, get to know people that own guns. They're for gun rights. They're against the surveillance state, against the NSA. They're protecting um, your constitutional rights. I learned a lot of things related to, um, I mean, difference, like ideological, political, axiological difference between the libertarian movement. I understand what is voluntarism. I understood what is Ayn Rand and objectivism. I understood what is anarchism and minarchism, which are very different things. And, but the only thing that it's important, it's a non-aggression principle. So I'm inside of this small store, as you can see, um, and you have all of the ideologies that you can have. Can you put them in here? So Rothbard, it's uh, one of the pure uh, libertarian anarchist perspective. WikiLeaks you have, no human being is illegal. They're pretty consistent in terms of immigration. They're in favor of open borders uh, and an open society. The freedom of movement and freedom of people transporting from one place to the other place, just as their jobs, documented illegally, no citizen is required or should be any major issue. So let's go in this one again. Second Amendment, that's George Washington. Uh, it's for carrying guns, as you can see in this states in the north. In May, I thought that I was gonna find many, whatever people understand by rednecks, southerns, history of secession, slavery, uh, and Second Amendment. What it really means, how I understood it in here, is that people have the right for self-protection, not to initiate aggression, not to put it, not to intimidate you, not to create um, a threat against you. Just your own right, right not not to blow a whistle but but actually have a gun and protect yourself from anything let's go over what, what this guy said in here cold congress you know that's ron paul it's the most political most important political figure here in the states with gary johnson um great guy i would recommend you go into their tv channel government husband and wife that that's something really important in there in, in this community you will find a lot of people that are called uh, polyamorous meaning they don't believe uh, that there should be only one relationship or that it should be between one or two or five genders but it's eternal they have pansexual identities and um you should not and they decide how they want to be labeled themselves, not as male and women, not as with one specific gender, one specific ideology, and state does not have the right to authorize. It's not about legalized marriage. No, the state it's the state keeps out of itself, and it's the gods, the the, the rights have been, that have been given by God, by human nature, by 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 someone else not by the government. The government has to protect them but does not have to grant them as if, as if it was a gift. So let's go on this one. Um, Obamacare, they refuse it. Obama, yes, we can murder. No, you give me your guns. Civilian disarmament, that's what many people in here believe. That was what happened with the status government. So just take a look at the, uh, this, this two in here. Those might be like the most extreme uh, ideological the distinctive figures that you can see. Malcolm X, uh, it's uh, Anne Ludwig von Mises. So Malcolm X, uh, he created the Nation of Islam in the 1960s or 50s. He advocated gun def um, defense and he was his label as and the angriest black man that you, you can imagine. He is, um, he said, if anyone initiate force against black people, and I'm pe talking about slavery period, about Jim Cross secession period back before then, the 1960s, black people have the right to kill absolutely anyone if they're in the way. And Bud Mises, he is one of the Austrian school economics, extreme, extremely, extremely libertarian that would be more understood uh, in a capitalist, pro-business sense, and Malcolm X as a radical, um, pro-violence guy. So you have them, the two of them um, here together. One of my theories, well, what I've found in here, is that you can get extreme left in the socialist perspective and uh, extreme right not in the religious perspective but in the in the capitalist pro market pro business perspective and they and they have two men of things in common two men of things in common trying to abolish the current state of things 
going against chronic capitalism or chronic corporations, the ones that lobby in K Street, uh, the ones that are creating a lot of regulations that are useless and most of them uh, are affecting minorities, Hispanics or blacks. So that's that's what I see in here. This one in here, this one is for Ayn Rand. Take a look at here, I and mean, it's Malcolm X, then it's Von Mises, then it's Tupac Shakur. What the hell is Tupac Shakur doing in here? And the next one in here, you see that one in there? That is for Ayn Rand. This is one Atlas Shrugged. Capitalism in history. If it teaches anything, it would be that private property is inextricable linked with civilization. So um, this guy here is the Atlas Shrugged. It's one of the most. It, it, it's the second or one of the most popular libertarian movements um, in in the world, basically. That it's the Atlas. Remember that the Titan from Greek origin, and he had the world in here, and he couldn't stand it. He was there forever. And he just said to Shrug, Shrug means doing this, Ugh, I don't care. So he had the world and said, fuck it, get away, get away, it's good. I'm responsible for myself and that's the history of John Galt. He's an amazing, um, amazing character, an amazing philosopher. And the book is about a thousand and two hundred pages. But it, may, it basically means that um, it's about selfish and egoism and your ethics just to serve yourself and not to serve anyone else's um, that is not on a voluntary corporation trading. So you should see human beings as traders. I give you this and then I receive this. No state, no taxes, nothing involved. So this is more store that uh, that we can see in here. I mean, it's a store for, for free sex. It's a store. But take a look at all the ideology, all the perspective of what is happening with GFK, Bradley Manning, um, all the indigenous. Just trust the indigenous, right? Give all the power to the government and you see how the indigenous are going to be living. Just look at this in here. They have a huge variety. Look at Muslim. They have a religious perspective in here. There are a couple of guys, I met this guy, I'm not sure what's his name. He lives, I think it's in Tennessee or Kentucky, one of those states. He's uh, the creator for Muslims for Liberty. He's a white guy, I think from the Appalachians, mountains. And uh, he, he, he turned into Islam. And he's given and trying to explain why does Islam or Islamism as a political ideology has a lot of relation with libertarianism. So in this fortress, you would find people from the most, there are 2,000 people that came here in 2014. You would have the people with the most distinctive ideologies that you would ever see anywhere else in your life, period. If you don't know me, my name is Julio Alejandro. I've lived in Paris, I've studied in Cambridge, I've studied in freaking Canada, I've been to dozens of places. I'm a first one in Chicago. This is what I do for a living. It is amazing the number of, idea of people with distinctive ideologies that you can learn in seven days. It's like an energy bar, like a, a force, like if I would give you the, this, but it's full of knowledge, like comprised vitamin ingredients knowledge. Um, one, of the, one of the major things, so we can just step out and finish this one, it's some recommendations about their weaknesses. One of them, um, and probably the most important one, it's, it's the, the lack of diversity. I'm, I don't mean a lack of diversity on, 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 on no, no. this one is Ayn Rand. Right. Rod Lord. It's okay. Yeah. So excuse we can me, go. please. Oh yeah, sorry. Sorry, man. New Hampshire, yo. Yes, of course. Come on. Don't worry. Um, I, I, tr I mean in terms of this is an, a pretty much almost exclusively white people event. Um, out of those 2,000 people, I only found me and another Mexican girl. It was got one single guy from Puerto Rico, African, I mean, 98% of the people are white. Simple as that. Or 99% of the people are white. Mostly males, mostly from here, from this part. So the idea of liberty, it gets confused as a white perspective. And many people would have to agree with it in, in many sense. Another final recommendation, because Joel Valenzuela from Guadalajara is waiting in there, um, would be to try to address with, with a more practical way towards um, P3 
people who doesn't care or understand or has a history of liberty. They don't care about their privacy. They don't have about civil rights. They don't. They only care about their what they have, what they get in, the, in their belly. That they don't get shot because of the violence that is going on outside of Chicago in the Sun Park, and they would care about not getting deported. And in that sense, I found very little close to no non strong arguments. People haven't don't even think about it. Like if you're an undocumented immigrant from China, Salvador, or Taiwan, uh, didn't have a perspective or something strong to offer you. If you're uh, an African American from from the Bronx, from Compton, from these African American neighborhoods. They don't really give you a lot of respect. They don't give you hope. They're just, that's one of the most uh, visible weaknesses and opportunities that this movement has at the moment. So again, this is, I think it's 30 of June, 2004 in New Hampshire. And uh, Viva Freedom, Viva Hayek, Viva Friedman, and thank you very much. Goodbye.